Uh, hello everybody, uh, my name is Jan and uh, I would like to give a talk about uh, similar what we heard the uh, talk before uh, because uh, when we are designing uh, some uh, streaming data platform uh, at uh, Open Czech Republic we were uh, having like exactly the same issues that were mentioned in the first talk in this track. We have so many technologies and so many uh, variants or so many uh, choices you can you can uh, make it's uh, a high probability that you will make your uh, choice wrong or that you will have to uh, change it in the future so we are trying to uh, find something that can help us um, tackle this problem so uh, first something about me uh, I'm a data engineering focusing on streaming systems and <clears throat> as mentioned I'm a Apache Beam PMC member and I uh, also had the uh, opportunity to uh, write a book about it, so if you are interested in, interested in Apache Beam, I can recommend it. Uh, uh, so about this talk, uh, I will try to introduce the, the abstractions that we uh, made, uh, how we made it, uh, why we made it, what are the access patterns that uh, enable somehow abstract access to your data, uh, and how this uh, lead us into uh, the ability to actually uh, build asset transactions on top uh, of uh, storage systems that do not uh, support it. Uh, we heard yesterday that uh, there is an Accord consensus pr protocol in uh, Cassandra uh, that enables that for Cassandra, uh, but there is some option, opportunity, uh, that uh, acid transactions can be uh, made possible between different systems. So, uh, yeah, the, the platform is uh, already uh, Apache licensed uh, and you can find it uh, on GitHub within the Open Czech Republic uh, organization. So, um, first, because uh, as opposed to the previous talk, uh, this is not a uh, metadata catalog, it has something uh, that resembles uh, data catalog, but uh, it is uh, differently defined. Uh, you have to define it up front and then you push your data through the, through the platform and it manages uh, the distribution of the data uh, among the different technologies that uh, you want to use. So to be able to do that, you need to define uh, something that the platform understands. And uh, that's uh, what we call entities, and these entities have some attributes. You can have multiple attributes, and the attributes have some uh, schema. There are two types of attributes. One we call a regular attribute, and uh, this is uh, the, the case that was here. Uh, if we have an entity user who has uh, some details, which is some structure, um, but we, we can also have uh, some vector or re relation of other um, um, attributes uh, that uh, the user can have, so uh, we can have uh, like multiple orders of uh, an user if we were building an uh, electronical uh, shop or something like that. Uh, so um, what we uh, do when we introduce uh, the wildcard attributes, as we uh, call it, is that we add a suffix uh, to, to the name of the attribute, which also holds some data. Uh, this could be a timestamp or something like that. And uh, this defines the complete data model. Uh, the platform uh, also needs to understand uh, the nature of the data because it, as I said, it moves the data around. So it ne needs to know how to serialize uh, the data to bytes, from bytes, uh, and how to, um, how to give uh, the data some uh, interpretation. So uh, if we have something that we give uh, the URN uh, proto uh, semicolon and then name of a, of a class. This class links uh, to a definition in the proto file which uh, has some structure but the, uh, the, the platform can look into the message and understand that there are uh, two, uh, in this case, uh, two fields of string uh, type. Uh, so if we have this data model uh, where we describe the, the world we want to um, push our data to. Uh, then we need to define something what we call attribute families. Uh, this is a grouping of attributes uh, of the same entity. So here we would have an, an, an attribute family that is called 
user details stream. Uh, and uh, we define that it is uh, for entity user and a set of attributes that will go to the same storage. In this, se in this case, it uh, says it, it will be uh, Kafka, Kafka storage, uh, which leads to some um, module that will be loaded uh, to the platform. And it provides uh, the abstract accessors to, uh, to this uh, specific storage, so to the, uh, to the def defined broker and topic. Uh, the platform supports uh, several uh, types of um, access patterns. The most basic one, which is because the platform is streaming first platform, is a, a commit log, which is uh, what essentially Kafka is a canonical implementation of, but you can have uh, multiple different uh, implementations like Apache Pulsar or uh, Kinesis, uh, Google PubSub and other um, managed services. Uh, there's also access pattern of random access, which is a classical uh, case of NoSQL no databases. Uh, then some um, access that, that give you uh, ex access to uh, uh, archive of streaming uh, data, which is typically stored uh, in uh, some batch storage like S3, HDFS, or and so on. So this is where you describe how you want to access data that is stored in this, uh, in this attribute, uh, attribute family. And then you have to give a type, which is uh, primary or replica. And this is essentially the, uh, the only moment where the platform really touches your data, because otherwise it uh, does some similar stuff like uh, in the talk before. But the platform actively uh, replicates the data between the primary attribute family and all the replicas. There is only one primary and multiple replicas um, available to the platform. So this is an example how, it, how, could you, uh, how you could um, create um, tables for in Cassandra that will be, will be mapped to, uh, in this case, uh, a user and his details. The, the details are uh, serialized, serialized by the platform to the, uh, to the table, given the uh, the format of the, of the details field or the attribute. Uh, and then we could uh, create orders which will be uh, something like this. Uh, again, we have a key stamp, which is the suffix of the, of the order uh, attribute, and it will be stored in a different table. Uh, in Kafka, we can, uh, the platform by default will, will create uh, the serialization like this. So it will have a key, which is the primary key of, of the entity, so the user ID. Uh, and then will be the name of the attribute, so details or order, one, two, three, whatever. Uh, the value will be, will be the bytes serialized against, as in the case of the Cassandra table, or null if it is a delete, because the uh, platform, as we will see later, uh, is uh, the commit lock con contains absurd and deletes tombstones uh, like in, in Cassandra. Uh, this is how the data flows. Uh, by default, uh, a client writes the data to the primary commit log of the given attribute the, the, the client wants to write. And there, there is a, the runtime component of, of the platform, uh, which will uh, ensure that all the replicas receive the data in eventually consistently, uh, eventually consistently. Yeah. So, uh, as I mentioned, the primary commit lock can be anything that uh, can be uh, can behave like a commit lock, which is uh, the typical uh, Kafka pops, pops up kinesis, pulsar, and so on. These uh, time uh, types of uh, streaming technologies, uh, while the batch replica, is, uh, where is the batch uh, version of the of the uh, commit lock. Uh, which is rolled periodically uh, and stored in, uh, in batch um, systems like HDFS, uh, Google Cloud Storage S3, or anything else that you can think of. And the uh, random access is typically Cassandra HBase, Big Table, Big Query, Elasticsearch, something that uh, is able to give you the data that you, that you are uh, querying in, uh, in real time. Uh, so, the data model is described by, uh, by entities and attributes, and then each update or delete uh, of any attribute in the system is described by something that the platform calls stream element, and it has uh, some UID to be able to uh, deduplicate data, uh, and uh, 
It has the descriptor of the entity, descriptor of attribute, which contains uh, all the information that is available about the attribute, like how do I serialize the data. Uh, it contains the key, uh, the name of the attribute, like details or order, whatever suffix there is, timestamp, and the, the value, or null if it is from stone. Uh, if we compile this configuration, which is essentially everything uh, that defines the, the data model and the attribute families, families is only a configuration file. So we can um, insert this configuration file into a, a code generator, and we'll, it will generate a Java class, uh, which is uh, often called a model. Oh, sorry. Model, um, which contains typed uh, information about the, the entities and the attributes. So we have, uh, it knows we have, uh, we have user, and it knows the user has details, and it knows that the type of the attribute and uh, what is the type of the value. Then we can create this element. Here we call it absurd because it inserts or rewrites uh, the data that would be stored for user123 in this timestamp with some value. This is, uh, it doesn't contain any, any really deta real details, but uh, yeah, you would have to uh, imagine that there is still something. And then the stream element can be written into the platform. Uh, how is uh, the platform defines uh, abstract data operators? It is uh, something that uh, I create a configuration. I from this configuration, I create something the platform calls repository. And then from this repository, I can create some data operators. In this case, this is a direct data operator, which uh, works inside the current JVM. So I can, from there, I can get a writer, and I can get uh, some uh, observers or readers for uh, the data. We'll see that in a minute. Currently, we have three uh, data operators, which is the direct one, uh, Beam, which is this Apache Beam. So as we will see, uh, I can create an abstract pipeline uh, that will read the data uh, from the using the configuration file from the configured sources, or Apache Flink. So uh, if we wanted to write the data using the current GVM in not a distributed way, but simply using uh, the process which runs this code, we can create uh, the direct data uh, operator and get uh, a writer for this attribute. Uh, this attribute is uh, online. Online, oh, sorry, online because it uh, it is possible to write the data and get instant uh, or nearly instant feedback if the if the data was written or not, which is the part here. Uh, I write it and I provide. Um, um, confirmation uh, asynchronous uh, function which will handle if the write uh, succeeded or failed uh, and handle failure in case something goes wrong. Uh, and this is how we would read the data again using the abstraction so I can change the source which would maybe Kafka in this case to something else just by modifying the configuration file. Uh, the code would remain the same. Uh, so I will get a commit log reader, and which has a method observe, which is uh, which creates uh, pushes the, the observer to a different thread. Uh, I can give it a name, which is uh, very useful because you, this name is transferred to um, to in the case of Kafka uh, the group ID. So if I will have, will have multiple instances uh, of GVMs running this code, uh, they will load balance the topic the partitions in uh, in topic which is associated with uh, the, uh, the entity and the attribute that I'm trying to read. So this has a callback or uh, some observer. And uh, that gives me the, the element, which I can parse to, to, the, to the value. Uh, and uh, if, it, if, it, if I parse it correctly, I can process it and then uh, commit uh, which uh, again tells Kafka or PubSub or whatever that the message was uh, correctly processed and it, it can commit uh, the, uh, the processing to the, the storage system. Uh, this is how it would look in uh, using the Beam data operator, uh, which uh, works with the P collections, uh, which is something that uh, represents data collection or data stream. 
DS for parallel. Uh, so this is uh, where I can create my data pipeline and then submit it to uh, to uh, Flink um, or Dataflow or whatever uh, stream processing engine that I will uh, want to use. So uh, because this is not about Beam, I just created the, the P collection here, uh, and then I would have to uh, create the uh, the data pipeline. Uh, because the, the team that uh, created this pipeline is uh, multi-language, if I can say that, uh, we need to uh, be able to read the data from different languages. And uh, that is uh, why we created another uh, kind of optional but uh, useful runtime um, part of, of the platform, uh, which is in ingestion and retrieval gRPC service that uh, is, uh, the, the data model is pushed, the, the configuration file is pushed into uh, the service, and then it, again, knows the entities, knows the attributes, can validate that uh, uh, the data that the client, client writes uh, are serialized using the correct uh, data, that it can be just serialized, which is uh, in uh, streaming systems uh, often a problem if you get something that you cannot read uh, on the other part. And you have to really carefully uh, manage that because otherwise you can get into a situation where your pipeline uh, restarts uh, indefinitely and cannot make any progress. So this is removed by the ingestion uh, itself because that, uh, it, it validates that <coughs> the data really matches the, the configuration. Uh, what we really went through is that we, we had the, the application running on, in on-premise on um, solution and we wanted to change it really like some five years ago to, um, to cloud providers, which uh, of course meant we need to uh, change uh, some of the um, dat data sources. So we wanted to change Cassandra for Bigtable uh, and um, HDFS uh, to Google Cloud Storage. Uh, some of uh, things that we were um, sending through Kafka, we wanted to uh, send through PubSub and so on. What we didn't want to is uh, change uh, the business logic or any, any, any other applications that are accessing the platform. So yeah, we changed the, uh, changed the bindings and the configuration file, files and we really get uh, the, this, uh, this is example, not, not uh, what, we, what we get because we are uh, moving to Google Cloud, but we could do that, do, could uh, change uh, Kafka for Kinesis and uh, S3, uh, HDFS for S3, and um, Cassandra for DynamoDB if we were mo moving to AWS. Uh, so everything else remained as it was. And the benefits uh, we are seeing as well is that uh, typically we have, you have teams that uh, focus on the infrastructure and then uh, teams that do the application logic, which often involves uh, definition of the of the um, database schemas, uh, and this can uh, be um, tricky for for uh, some of the teams. So we can more easily um, relax this because the the development teams uh, are supposed to work with the abstract entities and attributes. So we can uh, optimize this. Uh, for the application team, uh, teams on some middle uh, layer. Uh, what we also did when we were uh, moving from on-premise to, uh, to cloud, uh, we wanted that to be without any disruption of the service. So uh, we, want, we needed to create a multi-region uh, replication, uh, which Essentially, the, the platform, uh, because we needed it, supports by, again, changing configuration. Uh, it can be m configured that it creates a uh, multi-master uh, region, uh, multi-region replication of your data. So if the data is written uh, on, in one data center, it gets eventually consistently replicated across all the other, uh, all the other regions. And how we do it? Because, as mentioned, uh, in the uh, first talk in, in this track, if you uh, create a cycles or something like that in your, in your multi-master replications, uh, that doesn't work well. So uh, the platform actually creates uh, multiple commit logs 
uh, one of which is local commit log. The client al always writes to the local commit log, which gets replicated to all the other uh, regions uh, into uh, something that the other region has uh, as an input commit log. So this would be binded, this local commit log would be binded to n other output uh, commit logs of other, re in other regions and uh, this input commit log in the target uh, region will have, re will receive data from all the other uh, regions into his uh, input commit log which then gets replicated to a single global commit log so that every client then sees the merged uh, data streams, data stream that comes from all the replicas. Uh, what we also see is that, as I mentioned, due to removal of the, of the storages from, from, the, uh, from the system or the, the, the way you think about your applications, you can easily test because you create whatever you want to create, you write it in, into uh, local test implementation of the specific storage. You can have commit log, random access, or whatever uh, the, the platform supports. You, we have uh, uh, testing impl implementations of that. And then you can easily run uh, whatever logic you have in uh, using a direct uh, operator or using Beam or Flink and verify that the pipeline after it ends or the uh, program or whatever, that it has written what you expect to be written. So every, everything that uh, should be as, an, as the output. And the last thing that we are actually uh, moving to production right now is uh, that because the platform is actually in charge of what and how is written, and what and how is then read, uh, it is possible to create a validation uh, or uh, to watch for violations uh, of ACID properties of a, of a transaction. So if you say, I'm starting a transaction, and then you say, give me this data by querying, uh, for instance, Cassandra or uh, whatever our da uh, other database or reading or caching uh, Kafka topic, and you say, okay, I, I, I know in my transaction that this entity, say user, has these details with this key, uh, and then you send it uh, with your request to write the data. Uh, there can be uh, some coordinator who can uh, verify that this really uh, doesn't violate any, uh, any asset properties of your transaction, and it can be cleanly committed or rejected in case that there you, the data you read was actually stale because, as I said, the, the platform is eventually consistent, so you can see dirty reads and whatever. But if you have uh, uh, some coordinator that can verify this for you, you can easily get uh, the platform can return you a, a, a rejection, which means you have to restart your transaction, uh, pretty much like Git does when you when you try to push something and it uh, it's not on on top of the current branch. So it will, take, it will reject you and you have to pull uh, the, the new data which is equivalent to restarting the transaction. Uh, yeah. So this is how it works currently with uh, uh, using uh, coordinator that is uh, single, uh, or single, single process in one GVM. It can have multiple instances but Given the current uh, state of the implementation, it is uh, master, um, uh, master slave version. So uh, there is single master and multiple um, uh, slaves or replicas that are just spare, uh, waiting for the master to fail. And when it fails, they, one of them picks up because it actually is done by reading, in our case, Kafka topic. So due to uh, reassignment of, of the consumer group, uh, a new uh, coordinator becomes uh, uh, the uh, master or active one and uh, can start uh, verifying the transactions. Uh, it, the flow is that the data is read to, uh, by the client through uh, the, the, the abstraction and then uh, writes the data through the writer, including the information about what data was on input uh, of, uh, of the 
uh, of the transaction. This gets written to a request commit log because if you have uh, something that works like uh, uh, you can online read the data and write it and someone else read it, then actually what you have is a asynchronous RPC system. So uh, this, this request get written to, uh, to some commit log, is, is read by the transaction manager, it does its logic uh, and uh, outputs uh, this to a uh, uh, commit, commit log, uh, which is something that is necessary to do because what we need now is to, uh, if we want to write a data, we need to ensure uh, eventually consistency between returning the response uh, to the client and actually writing the data. Because if we return a uh, response and don't write the data, then it gets to an inconsistent state and the opposite is also bad. So we need to make sure that there is eventual consistency, which is why uh, the, the manager cannot, uh, cannot write the data uh, like into uh, in independent writes because it could uh, crash in, in the middle of the, of the operation and it would end in an inconsistent state. So this gets picked up by the replication controller and it returns the, uh, modifies the state of the, of the transaction and returns uh, response to the, uh, to the client. And by this mechanism, we are able to uh, get uh, the consistency on top of virtually uh, any storage system. Uh, the possible, uh, well, the way how we can look at it is uh, that actually what we have is we have one input stream and one output stream. The output stream is, is uh, just the, the commits or the modify, how we want to modify state of a transaction and what we want to return to the client. And this is if we take essentially any consistent stream processing engine, and this can be whatever, we can get this really in a, in a distributed manner uh, and uh, get um, the, the throughput of the transactions to not be limited uh, by the, the our current implementation, which is also quite fast. We have, we have seen like 10,000 10, uh, 10, transactions per second uh, with Cassandra. Uh, but using a real distributed engine, this could be possible to, uh, to be done uh, with a higher throughput. So... Uh, what is ahead of us? Uh, every software system uh, isn't, doesn't have enough, enough docs. It's possible. Uh, it's always uh, uh, true uh, for this, this platform as well. We would like to expand the community as a, a, a th that's why uh, this um, uh, conference is called Community Over Code. Uh, we see it as well. We would like to be able to uh, grow the community. Uh, polished some abstractions because, as I said, the, the, we created them like some six years ago, so there's something we can uh, probably, uh, there was some evolution that can uh, be done. We would like to add SQL support because the transactions can be, if we know the uh, entities and the attributes and uh, how the attributes, uh, which fields they have, it would be possible to, uh, to do, do SQL on top of that. Uh, and yeah, uh, in the previous talk, there was success uh, attempt to get to the incubator, uh, which is, of course, something that we as well would be very proud of. And that's enough for me. Thank you.